All right, ladies and gentlemen, as I alluded to at the uh, top of the show, a terrible 24-hour period over the weekend in four in three different states. We had four police officers shot. One died in San Antonio, as we mentioned. Uh, the others, uh, one shot uh, in St. Louis, one in another part of Missouri, one in Florida. And it seems to be open season on police uh, throughout this country. Uh, Jeff Reuter is a spokesman for the St. Louis Police Officers Association and a former member of the Missouri House of Representatives and author of a very, I mean, uh, what, everybody's got to read this book, The War on Police, How the Ferguson Effect is Making Us Unsafe. And it's, um, it, it's been re-released by WND Books. Jeff, uh, congratulations on that and welcome, sir. Yes, Steve. I uh, wish it was under different circumstances. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it, you had one of the shootings, uh, you know, in, uh, in your area, and uh, it's just, I, I don't know what to say. Look, it's a climate. You talk about the Ferguson effect, and it's absolutely true. We saw what happened to one of those police officers uh, down in, I, I forget where it was, where they were taking on a, a perpetrator. It might have been in Texas, and it was a female, and when after she was knocked unconscious and was fighting for her life, the police chief said that she didn't want to be on the news. She didn't want to pull her gun and shoot this guy, even though she had every right to. So she got bashed in the head and almost died. And that is exactly the Ferguson effect, where cops are afraid to do what they have to do. Yeah, it's not, it's not so much fear as it is just reluctance right. when you're under siege and politicians are attacking you, the media is attacking you, people are marching in the street, burning down buildings and, and uh, ambushing police officers. And you don't want your actions to result in some greater calamity. But, uh, I mean, the cops live in the moment and are making split-second, moment-by-moment decisions that have life-and-death consequences. And it's, it's, it's very, very frightening. But, of course, you know, the climate, I believe, has been created uh, from the top down, from the Obama administration, Barack Obama himself, I'm not saying that he's saying to go out and shoot cops, and I'm not saying that any shooting is directly linked or related, but certainly his rhetoric, uh, the Attorney General of the United States' his rhetoric, both Eric Holder and most recently uh, Loretta Lynch, and of course, last but certainly not least, the media, who just right. looks for any opportunity to blow something out of proportion, misrepresent the facts, uh, convict the cops on, uh, before anything is known, and then covers these riots as if there's some glorious you know, civil rights protest. Right. Yeah, that would make Martin Luther King roll over in his grave. By the way, I and this, I've been very critical of of the president and the Justice Department. I mean, words have consequences, and uh, you know they're engaging in this sort of double talk that leaves people thinking that that police are up to no good when that's just not the case. Right, and it's not only you know what they say; it's also uh, what they. What they don't say uh, right. speaks volumes as well. I mean, I, you know, as of right now, I haven't heard anybody even say anything about these police officers from right. the administration. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, the same administration that's uh, afraid to use terms like radical Islamic terrorists, uh, you know, is not afraid to criticize law enforcement and our supporters. Uh, but when a police officer is, is a victim of an ambush, which is the case in at least three of those shootings yesterday, uh, there's nothing but crickets. What about, you know, if Hillary, I said earlier that if this was still the campaign and Hillary was still running, uh, if, if one of these thugs that shot the cops uh, over the weekend had been shot first uh, and killed, um, legitimately so, as we've seen, uh, Hillary would invite the mother uh, to speak and be trashing the cops on behalf of the mother. Right, and she lost the election the minute the, the mothers of would-be cop killers took the stage uh, at the Democratic National Convention. That was the pivotal moment in this election, if you ask me. Yeah, no, I agree. I, she, she had them up there at the convention, and, and didn't the Philadelphia police officers uh, uh, come out in support of, uh, of, of uh, Donald Trump because of the disdain she uh, displayed for them uh, at the convention in combination with celebrating the mothers of, in many cases, thugs? Well, not just Philadelphia cops, the Fraternal Order of Police, yes. 3,000 cops strong, only labor union in the country that endorsed Donald Trump. Absolutely. All right, so, so you, let's talk about some of the things you spell out in your book. I mean, you know, I got this is a much smaller scale, and I, I attribute it to, um, to um, 
uh, Mayor de Blasio and, and his marching orders. But there was a, a dinner, Zionist Organization of America, at the Grand Hyatt last night. I was invited with my son. We showed up late. There were about maybe 100, 150 so protesters right in front of the hotel blocking the entrance. So I said to the police officer, one of them, I said, uh, I'm a guest for the dinner. How do, how do I get in? He said, I don't think you're getting in. I said, really? So I walked a few more uh, feet over to another police officer and said, I'm a guest at the dinner. You know, how, how, how will I get in? He said, they're blocking the entrance. You're not getting in. And I, 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 you know, I, I, could, I would have said, but I didn't because I'll tell you in a second, like, what? You mean you're not going to escort me in and move them out of the way? I mean, I'm suffering? Uh, and then the, the, the doorman of the hotel happened to hear me, and he brought me in a back entrance kind of. But, uh, you know, this is also um, when you have a city run by a mayor where you can now urinate in the street and cops are told to stand down. That's not good either. No. And, and since when is, when is somebody's uh, freedom of speech allowed to restrict your freedom of movement? Yeah, I mean, that's just insanity. So where are we headed? I told you that story to ask you a question, really, and that is, so you know, as you describe in your book, what what's going to happen? I mean, is Donald Trump and his uh, his Attorney General, hopefully Senator Sessions, um, and changing everything, changing the climate, changing what's acceptable now, is that going to help matters and help police feel more confident in doing what they need to do? And when I said afraid before, obviously I didn't mean that they were scared for their safety. I meant scared for the after effects as you so aptly described right and you know the, i believe that this election was a referendum on on uh support for law enforcement and we saw that the nation rallied around the candidate who who spoke in support of law enforcement now the question is uh will will he take bold strokes to defend law enforcement or will it be like other politicians where the uh support's been a mile wide and inch deep uh we need deeper support than that at a time where, where, as you said, it's open season on cops. Yeah, no, it's a very, very troubling situation. Um, you know, uh, do, do you believe, though, that, uh, that uh, a Justice Department and an administration can make uh, that difference? Oh, God, yes. I mean, uh, the, if, if Donald Trump would have been president during Ferguson, uh, the, the words and the uh, efforts coming out of the White House would have been completely different. Uh, you know, there, there hasn't been a single place where the Justice Department has launched a probe uh, that hasn't ended in some sort of court order uh, or consent decree. Uh, and and that wasn't the case with George W. Bush or Bill Clinton. Uh, about half of them ended up in consent decrees under those two. And we need to get back to a time where uh, these probes in the law enforcement aren't fait accompli. Yeah, so, uh, so we could look for... Uh uh, more law and order and more back to quote unquote normal under a Trump administration as far as police and policing you think you feel gosh I hope so yeah I mean, it's, it's, we'd need the help yeah absolutely Jeff great to talk to you and the book is available all over I presume yeah Amazon Kindle uh, the war and com and in, in bookstores near you all right uh, thank you Jeff appreciate it as always you bet Steve all right Jeff Rorder ladies and gentlemen it, it, it is so important uh, it is so important. 56, I think I said, police officers killed this year in this country. It is totally unacceptable. Uh, we've had policemen uh, and women ambushed, as we've seen over the weekend, uh, beaten, uh, attacked with an axe, uh, you know, all kinds of attacks on police officers. And that's not just something that, you know, that just happens by coincidence. It becomes epidemic it becomes acceptable. It becomes, I'm going to do it now, so somebody else did it. There are copycats. But again, it, it, it's, 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 it, it perpetuates under a climate, in a climate, within a climate. And that climate is created, as I said earlier, and as Jeff alluded to, from the top down. And when you have Barack Obama and the Attorney General of the United States, whether it was Eric Holder or Loretta Lynch, um, really, you know, telling these protesters to keep protesting and, sure, denouncing violence, but, but making it clear and, and basically making equal, equal in their words and in their condemnation uh, what they see as, as overreaction by police and the slaughter of police. I mean, that's insane. Totally, totally, totally insane. Unacceptable. It's got to stop. And God willing, as Jeff Reuter said, it will stop. So pick up his uh, book, ladies and gentlemen the war on police because there is a war on police. Give me five is next.